going to be talking about the Belimo custom retrofit forms, how to understand and complete them. We're going to be talking about why you need to fill out a custom retrofit form and which form should you use. What do the red fields on the form mean? How to read the response fields on the form? How to fill out a custom retrofit form? And how to submit a custom retrofit form? Custom retrofit linkages are used in applications in which there's no standard linkages available. A custom retrofit linkage will only fit as well as a customer's existing valve dimensions are communicated. That's why we have the custom retrofit form. It helps to record and communicate the customer valve dimensions. There are three custom retrofit forms, the UFSP for butterfly valves, the UVSP for ball valves, and the UGSP for globe valves. Red fields on a custom retrofit form. There are two types of red fields. There are required fields and error messages. For required fields, there are fields that are always going to be required and fields that become required as the form is being filled in. Our first example shows inches or millimeters required. As soon as a form is opened, you will see that that is red uh, and that will tell you immediately that's required. The second example underneath that shows that dimension D cannot be blank. That's a required field that only becomes required after something is filled in, in this case, shaft style being filled in as five. To the right, we have the error messages. Error messages will be read and will also give a short description as to what is incorrect. This will happen in cases of dimensions that are impossible. In this case, dimension F cannot be greater or equal to dimension D. The first form we're going to be looking at is the US fifth UFSP form. It is for butterfly valves. We're going to be looking at the butterfly valve form a little more in depth than the other two because this form is the one that's most often sent in. It's most often used. Butterfly valves are just more often retrofitted. The first thing you'll see on the UFSP form is the unit selection. You can see as soon as the form is open, inches or millimeters required is in red, and next to it are the options for inches or millimeters. If inches is checked off as the form is being filled in, the unit will be filling in as inches immediately. Um, if millimeters is, filled, is checked off as the form is being filled in, millimeter unit will be uh, um, automatically entered as the form is being filled out. To that case, the unit does not need to be included when a customer enters the dimensions. If a unit of measurement is included, you will get the error message that says, do not include unit of measurement. The next part is actuator selection. Tech support, uh, Belimo tech support will advise on the actuator selection. If you do not have the advisement of tech support as to what actuator to select, the customer may leave new actuator and one or two actuators blank. The customer will still have to fill in two-way or three-way based on if their valve is a two-way valve or a three-way valve. As new actuator and one or two actuators and two-way or three-way is filled in, the linkage part number will fill in uh, and that is the part number as to what the customer will receive for a linkage. The first major area of the UFSP series is the mount style. Customer will choose the mount style based on the ones given, whichever one is most closely resembling the, their current valve. If none of them are close enough, then the customer can choose mount style five and create a drawing of their existing valve using the examples. In this case, we're going to show mount style one. As you can see over to the right, once mount style one is picked, the area that is to the right of it stops being red and goes to gray. As areas are filled in, they will not stop being red and go to gray, showing what is already filled in and what currently still needs to be filled in. Here we're showing dimension A and dimension B being filled in. And it shows that dimension A and B are from the center of the mounting hole to the center of the mounting hole and from the center of the mounting hole to the center of the mounting hole. Dimension C is the overall height of the shaft. Another option to filling in the mounting hole locations is a bolt circle. If a customer knows a bolt circle, which is the circle that goes through the middle of all four mounting holes, uh, if they know that diameter, they can fill in the bolt circle instead, 
and that will also clear out the must be filled in red fields that are next to dimension A and B. And the mounting hole diameter. The mounting hole diameter has two sections. It can say drilled or a tapped hole. Uh, in this case, we're putting it down as a drilled hole and we're putting it down as 3 8 of an inch. Mount style two is similar to mount style one. Instead of the mounting holes being a square pattern, they are a diamond pattern. Dimension A and dimension B are from center of mounting hole to center of mounting hole and center of mounting hole to center of mounting hole. Dimension C is the overall height of the shaft. And the bolt circle is the diameter of the circle that runs through the middle of all four mounting holes. And again, if you fill in the bolt circle instead of dimension A and B, then you do not have to fill in dimension A and B. It will clear it out. And the mounting hole diameter. This time we're filling it out as a tapped hole, 1024, which just shows there are a couple different ways to be able to fill out the mounting hole diameter. Um, and we'll go through a couple more examples in a bit. Here we have mount style three. Dimension A is the center of the mounting hole to the center of the mounting hole. Dimension B is the length of the cutout around the shaft. There are some valves that do not have that cutout. And as you can see to the right, dimension B has may not be required. And if it were this case, we would not fill anything in and simply bypass it. Dimension C is the height of the shaft from the top of the shaft to the flange. And the mounting hole diameter, in this case, we're filling it out again tapped as M12, showing again another way that it can be filled out. We have mount style four, which is a valve with a packing gland. Dimension A and dimension B are from center of mounting hole to center of mounting hole and center of mounting hole to center of mounting hole. Dimension C is from the top of the shaft down to the flange, so the overall height of the shaft. Again, you can fill out the bolt circle instead of dimension A and B. Dimension C2 is the flange to the top of the packing gland. And dimension G1 and G2 are from the flat to the flat on the packing gland and the flat to the flat of the packing gland. And the mounting hole diameter, this time it's 0.388 inches. Here's an example of mount style five, which is when a customer has a valve that does not match any of the existing mount styles. I sketched up an example of a valve and I used the dimensions on this form to show how we're going to be measuring out this form. And then I filled in the dimensions as I called them out on the drawing. The next big section for the UFSP form is the shaft style dimensions. Here we have shaft style four, which is a keyway. Once four is picked, you can see below, it will tell you which fields cannot be blank. Dimension D is the diameter of the shaft. Dimension E is the length of the keyway. Dimension F is the width of the keyway. Another way to fill out dimension F is to check one of the boxes over in key size instead of filling it in. That's also valid. And another valid option is to both fill it in in the box and check off the key size box. Uh, what I see sometimes is a customer will write down a measurement and then realize that it is very, very close to a standard size and it's much more likely that it is simply that standard size, so they'll fill out both. That is perfectly valid. And dimension G, the depth of the key. Shaft style five is also a key, but this is a wood roof key. Dimension D is the diameter of the shaft. Dimension E is the length of the keyway. Dimension F is the width of the keyway. And in this instance, we're filling it out by checking off the box under key size instead of writing it into the box. 
Dimension G is the depth of the key. And dimension H is the top of the shaft to where the key be keyway begins. Here we're filling in as shaft style six, which is a double D. And again, below you can see the areas that have to be filled in are showing a red cannot be blank message. Dimension D is the diameter of the shaft. Dimension E is how the length of the double D. And dimension F is the distance from the flat to the flat. We have shaft style seven, which is a hexagon. Dimension D is the overall diameter of the shaft. Dimension E is the length of the hexagon on the shaft. And dimension F is the distance from the flat to a flat. We have shaft style eight, which is a pinned shaft. Dimension D is the diameter of the shaft. Dimension E is the top of the shaft to the center of the pinned hole. Dimension F is the diameter of the pinned hole. And dimension G is the center of the pinned hole down to the mounting flange. As a note, dimension E and dimension G will always or should always equal the same exact as the overall height of the shaft. Dimension C, as said earlier, is the overall height of the shaft. So dimension E plus dimension G should always equal dimension C. If they do not add up, you will get an error message letting you know so. In shaft style nine, which is a square shaft. In this case, dimension D may not be required because if the shaft is square all the way down, then we will not need to know the diameter of the shaft. So we skip immediately to dimension E, which is the length of the square. Dimension F is the flat to the flat. And over to the right, you can see that square or diamond that must be checked is in red. When the valve is closed, the shaft will either look like a square or a diamond. In this case, we checked off square, showing that that's what it looks like when the valve is all the way closed and the red field goes gray. The next section of the form is the actuator environment information. Here, the customer will fill out information on the existing actuator and information on the environment that the actuator is being used in. There is also a red revision number box. It is in order to help keep track for the customer and for customer service if multiple revisions of a single form are being sent in. Underneath that, we have customer and valve information. As much information as possible should be filled in, but there are a couple red fields that are fields that are absolutely required. Over to the left, we have customer and email, which are absolutely required for tech support use, so that tech support will have means of contacting the customer. And over all the way to the right, we have valve size and two-way or three-way as red required fields. They are two fields that are absolutely required for retrofit to be able to build a linkage. But again, as much information as possible should always be filled in. Underneath that, we have the submit form button. The submit form button will open up a email page and will save a copy of the form and attach it to that email. That email will be addressed to tech support. It will not send that email immediately, giving the customer the option to add somebody else or add another address to send the email to. It would allow the customer to add any other attachments or to write anything in the email text body box. This is a good area for the customer to add any additional information to the form. Sometimes we have customers send in spec sheets or if there's anything going on around the valve, they will take photographs of the valve and attach it to that email. Or if they have to have a drawing of the valve because they needed to fill out mount style five, that drawing should be attached to this email before hitting send. A couple notes on the submit form button. The submit form button is a macro, and in order to use it, macros need to be enabled. 
when the form is first opened, the customer will get a little message saying, would they like to enable macros? They would hit yes. If for any reason the customer cannot use this button or cannot enable macros or having any kind of difficulties, the customer is able to simply save a copy of their form and attach it to an email sent to technical support. They do not need to use the button if they do not want to. That should be an easy workaround. The next form we're going to be looking at is the UBSP series form, the custom ball valve retrofit solution form. We're gonna go a little more quickly through this and the next form, uh, just because these are not used as often. The UBSP series mount style one or two look very similar to the mount styles for the butterfly valve form. Uh, the one interesting thing is the ISO box uh, in the center near the bottom of this page. The ISO box gives the option for simply checking off one of those boxes instead of filling in dimension A, B, C, and um, as you can see down to the bottom left, the ISO box tells us the mounting hole diameter and the bolt square. By checking that off, everything over to the right is in gray and does not need to be filled in. Mount style three is a little bit different from the other mount styles we saw before. So we're simply gonna look at mount style three and show that dimension C is the distance from the center of the shaft to the end of the flange. Dimension D is the diameter of the, of the shelf around the shaft. Dimension E is the difference in height from the top of the shaft to the mounting flange. And we're moving on to shaft style dimensions. These shaft style dimensions should look familiar to the shaft style dimensions that was on the last form. There are four different styles. There is a double D with a nut, a double D without a nut, a square with a nut, and a square without a nut. We would pick the shaft style that is most closely resembling the one on your valve. As you can see, shaft style three and four have the same boxes that were on the last form, saying diamond or square. You would check one off depending on what your valve looked like when all the way closed, if it looked like a diamond or a square. Underneath that, we have the actuator environment section, the customer information, and the submit form button. Again, that's going to be giving information on the existing actuator, on the environment around that actuator, and important information for tech support to be able to be in contact with the customer, and important information for retrofit to be able to build a linkage and the submit form button which works exactly the same you can click it it will open up a email the customer can attach additional information or write in information or they can simply uh, save a copy of the form and send an attachment of that copy uh, to tech support the last form we're going to be looking at is the ugsp form it is for globe valves the UGSP series has valve styles. One of the major things I notice uh, from customers on this is they have a lot of trouble with dimension D1, dimension D2, and dimension D3. Regardless of what valve style is picked, these three will be consistent. Dimension D1 is the length of the stem when it is fully up. Dimension D3 is the length of the stem when it is fully down. And dimension D2 is the difference. So if dimension D2 is not the difference, you will get an error message stating dim D2 must be dim D1 minus dim D3. The section underneath that is the new actuator uh, that will be filled in as advised by tech support. And if tech support has not advised, the customer can not fill that in and have tech support fill it in. The UDSP series has two stem styles, either threaded or notched. You will pick the stem style based on what most closely resembles your valve and fill in the dimensions uh, according to the models uh, right on the form. Underneath that, we have the actuator environment, 
where you fill out the existing actuator information and the environment that the actuator is in, the customer information, where again, important information, uh, absolutely required information is in red, but as much information that can be filled in should always be filled in, and the submit form button, which again, can be clicked so that an uh, email page is automatically opened up, or the customer can save a copy of the form and attach it to an email to tech support. So that's Blimo Custom Retrofit, understanding and completing custom retrofit forms. The three forms, UFSP, UBSP, and UGSP forms. Uh, talking, we talked about the retrofit form response and require, uh, res the response to required and error fields. Uh, how actuator selection should always be done with tech support advisement. And if tech support has not yet advised on the actuator selection, the customer will let tech support uh, pick that out. How the dimensions provided on these forms will determine how accurate the linkage is. And our goal is always to create a linkage that is the most accurate for whatever you have. How to use the submit form button. And if anyone's having trouble with the submit form button, how to simply save and uh, attach a copy to an email for tech support. Um, and hopefully you will find that this was useful in using uh, the text, uh, the Belimo forms in the future. Thank you much. Thank you very much for listening. If you'd like to find these forms, they are on the Belimo website under Retrofit Solutions. Thank you very much, Diana. Before we move on to questions, please remember to follow Belimo on social media to keep informed and see what's going on. We will now have a question and answer session. Please type your questions into the box and I will read them aloud. If you should think of any questions after the session, you can email training at us.belimo.com. And if we do not get to your questions, we will certainly answer them via email. Again, please feel free to type your questions into the box down below. Okay, Diana, we do have a couple questions that have come in. Question one, if I don't know the information, can I type it in a placeholder to clear a red required field? Um, so that is very, very advised against. Uh, most placeholders will simply give you another error message, but even if it doesn't, the information is required for a reason because we want to make a linkage that works for you. Uh, if we only have placeholders, we will simply not be able to create a linkage and we'll instead have to go back to get that information from the customer anyway. Okay. Can I use a retrofit form without enabling macros in Excel? Uh, absolutely. The only macro on the form is a submit form button. If enabling macros is not an option, then simply fill out the form as normal. And at the end, just save a copy of the form open an email, address it to tech support, and attach that copy to the email. Okay, this one just came in and I know you did answer it, but if you can just go over it one more time, where can I get a copy of the Belimo retrofit forms? The Belimo retrofit forms are on the Belimo website under retrofit solutions. Once you go to retrofit solutions, you will see right near the middle of the page, uh, the Belimo retrofit forms listed and where how you can download it. Okay, thank you. What if none of the mounting styles on the form match my value? Uh, if none of the mounting styles match, you can simply create a sketch and use the examples to help with that sketch and have that sketch be an attachment to the email sent to tech support. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Diana. Once again, thank, thank you. you so much for attending today's webinar. I'd also like to thank again one more time, Diana. If you should have any further questions, remember you can request uh, an answer at training at us.belimo.com or if you'd like a copy of the webinar, you can also shoot us an email. Thank you everyone and have a great day.